We will be getting started in just a few seconds. I'm Pastor Lamont, Greater Holy Temple, and this is our James E. Lennox Bible Institute. I'm hoping I'll get some confirmation that we're on. Uh, so, I'll wait for a bit. God bless you, each and every one of you. Pray that you are doing well, that God is showing himself to you even in this time of an unusual time when we are in our houses, sheltering in place. Interesting terminology, sheltering in place. But while we're sheltering in place, we are trusting that God is is with us as he is promised by his word. Amen. Just waiting for some confirmation, email confirmation that, that I am indeed on. Pray. It, it says live. Let me just send me a text so that we all can just begin this together. Ah, okay. I believe I'm learning this too. So I see it looks as if 11 people are on and. Uh, so I must be on, eh? Ah. Well, good. I'm just going to get started. I'm just going to have faith that we are on the air. And uh, we are going to... Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, I've got the confirmation. <laughs> That's wonderful. Good, good. Let's let's pray together. Let's pray together. God bless you. Welcome. Uh, Pastor Lamont again for Greater Holy Temple, Church of God in Christ. And this is our James E. Lennox Bible Institute. God bless you. We are all in this. There are at least 15 people on right now, and we're praying together. We're meeting together in this, this unusual platform. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this Tuesday in which we have sought your face. We fasted and we prayed. We've read our word. Oh, God, we, we just thank you because as we sought your face, your presence was with us. We thank you for the things that you are teaching us in this time. You are teaching us something. You are growing something up in us. God, when we finish with this thing, we know we are going to be stronger. We are going to be wiser. We are going to be better. So thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray for all the saints that they will feel your presence. Oh, God, that they will know that you are with them, that they will be comforted with that knowledge. Thank you, Lord, that you are going to see them through this and that when it's all over, not only will they see see the glory in the midst of this thing, but they will see even more glory and honor after it is over. God, we just say thank you because you are proving yourself real even in this time. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your power. Thank you for everything that you are giving us. Now, God, we just ask that in this time of Bible study, when we are all together, we are all together, that you will indeed get the glory, that, that you will stir your knowledge up in us, that we will say yes to your word, yes to your will. I submit myself to you that what I say on tonight will be edification for everyone that hears 
and will accomplish your purpose and ultimately you will be glorified. I pray in Jesus name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, welcome. More and more joining us and I know some join us later on and it's just so good to to be able to do this. God has made the provision for us, even in this time of what seems to be isolation, and yet we are not isolated. Neither are we isolated from God, nor are we isolated from one another. We've already stated before that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. And I just have praise in my heart and in my soul. And it just comes right out of my mouth unto the Lord. Look, let me tell you, when I praise the Lord, it strengthens me. When I praise the Lord, it encourages me. When I praise the Lord, I just believe I can just go through anything. When I praise and honor God, I just feel his strength in me. Praise his holy name. Well, I have a particular Bible study, and it may, I, well, it may or may not be different, uh, but a Bible study that it was prompted by a letter that went out from our presiding bishop, Bishop Blake, the presiding bishop for the Church of God in Christ, but we must also understand and recognize that he is also one of the great church leaders in the Christian world, and he is well known, and he, his authority is accepted all over the world. Uh, and so in this letter, he wanted pastors, leaders, bishops, superintendents, whoever they might be, he wanted them really to understand the stand of the Church of God in Christ, the official stand of the Church of God in Christ, coming directly from that one voice who is our elected leader, our presiding bishop. And that he wanted to make sure that we knew that the stand of the Church of God in Christ is to follow the mandates of our federal, state, local governments in this stay-at-home time. This stay-at-home time is important, and he made wanted us to understand that this is not a, an assault on our faith. By all, it really it it is it is by faith that we're even able to do this. Look, this is a testament to our faith that we're able to to shelter in and still be connected to God, shelter in and still be connected to one another. And so, so it was important because he wants to make sure that we're not trying to have those assemblies. This is a serious time. This thing is real. And so, so even if we have to cancel our big meetings and if we have to cancel our church services or whatever those things might be, workers meeting, whatever those things might be, it is all right because we are obeying the law. We are obeying the law and we're obeying really the mandate of God. So he is letting, he is telling us then, please, please, everyone obey, obey the law, obey the mandates that are put before us. It is for our health. It is for our well-being. And as I am going to teach, it is the will of God and it really ultimately brings glory to God. He reminded us that in 1918, and I had heard reference to the, the flu uh, pandemic of 1918 related to this particular pestilence, the COVID-19, that, that in 1918, in uh, concordance with the law and, and wanting to protect the saints of God, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason canceled, get this, the Holy Convocation. That's right, it was canceled to be in line with the law and to protect the people. All that to say, if they can cancel the Holy Convocation 
of the church of God in Christ, then they can cancel a, a service, a local service or a workers meeting or a, a jurisdictional convocation. And we want to be in order. It's going to be all right. We, we are going to come together again. We are going to meet again. This is just for a time. Again, I say this is a season and seasons come to an end and bring in another season. So all we have to do is hold on. Are you holding on? Uh, you know, I missed that song. I want, I, I've been singing that song in my head. Our own, our own sister Vera sings it. It says, hold on. It says, that's just how we made it. Holding. Let, that's just how we made it. Trusting. That's just how we made it. Leaning on the Lord. You're going to make it. I'm going to make it. You're going to make it. We're going to make it together with God. So now I want to go into the Bible study on, on tonight. And uh, just confirming, I want to, uh, as in keeping with the idea of kingdom, I just want to press press the idea of who we are, our position in the kingdom, that in God's kingdom, we are his representatives. So I direct you first to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the 20th verse, 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. It reads there, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. I'll just read the whole thing because the Bible is good. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. But that first part of that says, says that our position in the Lord and in his kingdom is that we are ambassadors for Christ. We are representatives for Christ in the earth realm. We are ambassadors for Christ in our in our cities and in our counties. We are ambassadors for Christ in our country. We don't it, we don't represent ourselves. So we so our our own opinions and our own ideas really they come, they take a back seat because we represent the interests of God. We represent the principles of God and his kingdom. We want we so when we as ambassadors are operating in the world, it is it is it is important for us to do what God wants us to do, regardless to what we want to do or how we see things. And it's important for us as representatives of God, as ambassadors for Christ, to do what God wants us to do. There is an end. For this thing, there is an end to this thing. When I say an end, it means there's a goal for doing what God wants us to do. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, we know this, many of us know this well. The fifth chapter, the 16th verse. This is what the Lord Jesus says. He says, let your light so shine before men. Before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That that is our goal. That the way we act, the way we behave, the way we represent our God in the earth it, it is really to bring God glory. That we want to operate in such a way that that our behavior, that our, the, the things that we choose to do or don't do, bring God glory. We are letting our light shine. Let me let me just say something about our light. Really, we're not talking about our personal light. We are talking about the light of God that is in us. That is the light, the light that He has put in us by His Holy Spirit. That is the light. That we're supposed to let shine. Not our own personal light, you know. Like, whoa, I'm here. No. <laughs> Not at all. No, it is God's light inside of us. That is the light that is supposed to shine. And that is the light then that is supposed to move us to do good works. To, to, to do things that bring glory 
to God, for we are ambassadors for Christ. So having said that, I want to, to focus on three scripture, scriptural texts that point to our, our uh, civic duties as ambassadors for Christ. The first one would be in Romans, the 13th chapter. The second one will be in Titus, the third chapter. And, and the third one will be in 1 Peter, the second chapter. So I go to Romans, the 13th chapter. This is important for us, us to know. We need to know how to operate to, in the earth realm. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are not ambassadors for ourselves. We are ambassadors for the Lord. And the things that we do reflect on him. Don't you want to bring God glory? I want to bring God glory. So, Romans 13, this is what God says according to his holy word. This is given to Paul to write to the saints of God in Rome. 13th chapter, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. You, that means that, that they don't bother people that are doing the right thing. It's people who are doing the wrong thing. That the law is for that, for, for the lawless. Now, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good. And thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So those who are doing the right thing, who are doing good, amen, those are the ones amen, that will have praise even of that government, even of those who are in authority, even of those who are in power. Look, I, I understand, we, some may even say, I don't care what man thinks. Oh, yes, I care what man thinks because it reflects on the God in me. I want man to see the God in me. I want man to know that when I move and act in the earth that it is because of who I am in the Lord. And yes, I do care what man thinks. And so we go on. I'm going on to, to Titus, the third chapter. Beginning of that first verse. These are verses that we can just have as, as part of our arsenal. Why do we obey the law? Why do we do what man says do? We're saints of God. We should hear God. And, we, and, and I, I may even hit that. We obey God rather than man. Ah, let's put, put the word in context. Okay. It says, says uh, Titus, the third chapter, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. There's that word again, to every good work. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. So there we are at, at Titus, the third chapter, that first and second verse, that, that we obey the magistrates and the principalities that are put before us. We, uh, we operate within in this area of authority that, that we have state governments, we have city governments. We obey the law. 
Christians, saints of God, those who profess to know who God is, we obey the law. We should be just the, the, the best citizens in the country. That's who we are. Because why? Because the Bible says that brings glory to God. It will even cause the same those to whom uh, that we to whom we are submitting, according to the law, to to also say good things about us, to honor us, and thus honor God. Those people they obey the law. Those people they operate in 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 excellence and and they they do the right thing. This again it brings glory to God. We don't live for ourselves. We represent Him. Now I go to to First Peter, the second chapter. Yes. I begin at the 12th verse. So 1 Peter 2 and 12. It says here, having your conversation, your conversation is the way you live, your behavior. Honest among the Gentiles or be among those who don't believe the Lord or in your city, just among people. That whereas... They speak against you as evildoers, that they might have even maligned you and said, said you're evil or you're stupid or any other kind of things that they might, negative things that they might say. It says, whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Wait a minute. There it is again. Glorify God in the day of visitation. That we don't just obey the law, just to obey the law, which is a good thing. But we know that when we obey the law, when we submit to the authorities, when we do what is right, that it glorifies God. That's who we want to be. So, it's, so it gives this instruction. It says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. For the Lord's sake, for the Lord's sake, not our sake, but for the Lord's sake, for the gospel's sake, for the sake of our testimony, for the sake of who we are, for the sake of who we represent. We are ambassadors for Christ. Our behavior reflects on our king. Our behavior reflects on our kingdom. Though that means the, the kingdom of which we are a part. You are part of the kingdom of God. Yes, you are. You are. Yes, you are part of the kingdom of God. Yes. So, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the pun punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. So, when we do eat, when we do wrong, we get punished. Like when you speed, you get a ticket. Right? Yes. But you but when you do what is right, then you are praised. You will receive praise. But more so it is God that receives that praise. Look, I want God to be glorified in all my behavior, in every area in the earth realm. So even in, in the, civil, the civil life uh, of, of this earth realm, even in the civil life of, of the city and the state, uh, which is why we, we even file our taxes, pay our taxes, because that's who we are. We operate accordingly. Uh, yes. Uh, for so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. So we know we don't have a king. We don't have a king here. 
Uh, but we have other people, other ones who are uh, in authority. Here we go. Ooh, this is hard, right? The Bible says honor the king. Now, I know we can, and we must, this is a part of our, our democracy. We have different ideas of what the king should be doing. We have, some, some are, have different political ideologies. And we never preach ideology because the, the body of Christ is not a monolith. It, it, we're talking about how people perceive a government should work. Some believe one way, some believe another. It's that's fine. We've we now in this country we we have a, a, a head of our country, and although we may and this is this is absolutely honest, we may disagree with things that are done. We may. We may even criticize. It's okay to criticize because we believe that there is a better way, a more righteous way, a more just way of doing things. We can do that, yes. What, what, but when we talk about honor the king, we, what we cannot do, and I know, ooh, we, what we cannot do with any of those who are in authority over us because of who we are in God we, it says honor the king. What we cannot do, we cannot go into personal attacks, calling people by names. Uh, it's one thing to disagree with someone, but it's another thing to to wish them harm or to malign them. It, it, it's, you know, personal characteristics, you know, they're ugly, they're this, they're that, they're hair, they're this, whatever. whatever. Uh, it's this is this is tough, but I I do believe I believe according to what I'm reading. That that when we're we're talking about what's going on, even in our government, that that we keep it strictly to those things that are happening that we disagree with, but we cannot then become mean spirited. Mean spirited and and calling as as we we say calling folks out of their name, <laughs> we, it, that that's not who we're supposed to be. It's not who we're supposed to be. We're ambassadors for Christ, and when we join others, especially those who are not believers, in doing that, it says something about who we are. So uh, we must be careful. We must be careful. We. Absolutely, we can criticize. We can say this is wrong. We believe this is wrong. This is right, but we cannot go to name calling and those other other things that maybe others are doing. Uh, we we know they're they're the head, and uh, we we going to recognize them as as that head. So it's just something, something to put in your spirit and in your, in your mind. I know something in our flesh we might want to, want to lash out, but we must keep that proper perspective, even a kingdom perspective. We have to learn how to, to criticize and and say what's right and what's wrong without becoming mean spirited, and and talking about folk, if you will, talking about the, 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 those who are in authority. The Bible tells us to honor them. So we honor their office. We're not going to talk about them. We, we may talk about some of their decisions. And, and, and then once we talk about those decisions, really God gives us uh, something to do about that. And we, we will... Uh, I'm almost finished, really. We, we'll, we'll make give that as a final comment. What we what we do with with the decisions that are being made by those who are in authority. I did want to uh, talk about this uh, this thing uh, because some may use this as a justification a justification to disobey the law. And so I, I just address it briefly because I believe someone has even used someone might have used this, and that is in Acts the fifth chapter. Acts the fifth chapter, 
and uh, yes, I'll go to my, yeah. In the 28th verse, we, we must remember to rightly divide the word to, and when we rightly divide the word, we must see the whole context. Why was this said? To whom was it said? And so some may use this, this passage to, to disobey what man is saying. It says, I'll read from the 28th verse, 5th chapter of Acts, 28 and 29. It says, saying, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. We absolutely understand that. We ought to obey God rather than men. But see the real context of this situation. First of all, they were talking to the religious leaders of the day who were telling them that they could not preach in Jesus' name and ordered them not to. And of course, they could not. The apostles could not obey that. It's, they had to say, look, we are, we are preaching what we have seen. We are preaching what we have witnessed. And so, no, we, we can't do that. So it is better for us to obey God rather than men. He has told us to preach the gospel, and we indeed are going to do that. There was two of those, by the way, religious leaders, religious leaders. This was not to the Roman government. This was not to the civil leaders. It was to the religious leaders who were telling them that they could not believe what they believed and could not preach or teach what they were teaching. Look, Right now, there is no reason for us to use that scripture because no one is telling us that we cannot teach the word. No one is telling us that we cannot preach and teach Jesus. No one is, is telling us that we cannot sing. Or, and, and, and right now, because of the exigency of the time, of the, uh, that, that right now we just need to be sheltered in place. But this is not forever. This is for the good of the whole population, not only the saints of God, but everyone. And if anyone then is going to think about others more than themselves, it's going to be the church of God. And so in this respect, because no one is telling us that we cannot preach or believe the Lord or, or praise his holy name, look, you can praise him right now. Right where you, no one's going to knock on your door and say, I heard you say, Jesus, you need to stop that or else I'm going to call the police. No, no one is saying that at all. You can give God glory. You can worship. You can praise him right now for a season. We cannot all meet in a single place, but that's going to be over. But please, you, we should not use that scripture to mean that we can disobey the law. If that's so, then, we, then you can uh, 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 use that for anything anything. Yes, yeah, you can start preaching at your job, standing on your desk and preaching the word. Okay, yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so here it is <laughs> that we, because we are ambassadors for Christ, because we are, are letting our light shine so that our Father in heaven will be glorified, so that men will see those good works and then have praise, not just for us, but for the one we serve and the one we obey. And so in this, t this time, God, as we are looking uh, to those officials, as we're looking to the, the authority, as we, we're looking to them, and we have been mandated, by the way, to obey, to subject ourselves to them, to submit ourselves to them. Here, here, here's something, and we've been taught this, but it's not explicitly in the word. We've been taught all of our lives that we should pray for those who are in authority. Well, it's not really here. Uh, and yet, and yet there is an implicit, there is an implicit command for us to pray. And, and that, that command is in Philippians, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse. It says, be careful for nothing. 
or be full of care for nothing. Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing, but, by, but in everything. There you go. Be careful for nothing, but in everything. Everything. What's going on in the government, what is going on in the world in terms of this pestilence, this disease, in everything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. We need to just put that in our minds. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I got to give thanks. Yes, thank the God who hears our prayer. Thank the God who heals us. Thank the God who can change this situation. Yes, with prayer, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So that's our final. So with that, then yes, we pray about what's going on uh, in the White House. And we pray about what's going on in City Hall. And those, and we pray about those who are making those decisions. Yes, we pray. According as the Spirit of the Lord compels us, uh, 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 leads us in prayer. We pray. But we, we don't have, we're not full of care. We're not full of anxiety. We're not full of fear. But we go to the Lord in prayer, by prayer, in everything, in everything. You need to say everything, everything, everything. What's going on in my body? What's going on in my city? What's going on in my home? In everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. He wouldn't invite us to do that unless he's going to hear our prayer and he's going to answer. Your prayers do something. Your prayers mean something. So, ambassadors for Christ, let's do the right thing. Amen. Let's do this thing together. And let's call on the name of the Lord. Look, God is strengthening you. He is fortifying you. Man, you're feeling his presence right now. I don't know if you can hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Give him glory right where you are. Thank you, Jesus. We honor your name. We glorify your name. You are worthy of all praise. And Oh God, we just thank you. We thank you. Uh, look, I, I, I just want to want to pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this study. God, just stir it up in us so that we will, will know that we, we must do the right thing. We must we obey the law. And that ultimately is not only going to help us in our life, it's going to save our lives, it's going to be healthy for those around us, but also Ultimately, when we do what is correct, what is right, what is according to the law, it honors you and brings you glory. God, thank you, Lord, for this word. God, we're praying for everyone that is in their homes right now. God, first of all, we are praying the healing of God. If anyone has been touched by this thing, by this COVID-19, God, lift it off of them. Rid them of that pestilence in Jesus' name. Oh, God, remove that, that fever and all of the symptoms, God. Oh, God, we are praying right now that you would heal them in Jesus' name. Heal them. God, we have precious ones that are before you. Oh, God, our precious mothers and our, our, our precious seniors and, and our, our young people and some of the saints of God. God have already said, pray for me. God, we pray for them right now. Lord, we, we even declare but in, in Jesus' name that they be healed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for your healing. It is your power. Thank you, God. You are the God that heals us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're asking, and even as we're, we're in, oh God, that you continue to teach us, to grow us up, give us even more opportunity to to seek your face. God, bring us closer to one another. Bring us closer to our families. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for everyone, even those who are, have tuned in. And we're praying right now that even as they have listened to this broadcast, that they will be moved to get closer to you. Oh God, you are proving yourself in the midst of this. You are with us. And so right now, now, oh God, 
Those that want a relationship with you, we pray for them right now. Even as they say, Lord, I repent of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. He died on the cross for me. Shed his blood that I can be forgiven. By that precious blood, wash my sins away. I receive you as my savior and my Lord. Fill me with your spirit that I can be led by you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And now I'll learn to walk in your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Lord, let the peace of the Lord be upon each and every person. Let your, your glory fill their hearts. Let your presence be with them. Oh, God, I thank you right now. I thank you for moving in their lives. Lord, Get, just release all resources. Give everyone the things that they need. We pray provision of God that you, those who trust in you, will have no lack. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I, I'm finished for the evening. The Lord be with you. Uh, uh, Greater Holy Temple, we're continuing to do do ministry. We're feeding, feeding those who are hungry. And I want to thank all the saints of God who have continued to give in the various ways through Zelle and through calling the cards in. And, and some have used the old fashioned. It still works. The mail. <laughs> yes, you can still mail your tithes, your offerings, and your donations because we are still feeding. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned on Sunday, the, the line for groceries was almost three times as many, and I anticipate that is going the need is going to get greater. God has blessed us to be able to give. And so with the combination of things that have been given to us and your offerings, we'll be able to continue to do ministry in the community because we're letting that light shine. Why? Because we're ambassadors for Christ. God bless you. I love you. I love you so much. Someone has already said, look, when we get when we get together, it's going to the season's going to be over. When we get together, someone said we're going to tear that church up <laughs> with praise and honor to the Lord. I am looking forward to that day. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, I'll carry on. Until then, I'll praise and magnify and glorify his name until we come together one more time. God bless you. The Lord be with you. I love you. I love you. I love you.